now so a little update with the uh, the GY so we got the back wheel on we uh, just fed the chain through um, the swing arm obviously as we did and we put um induction air filter on can we get a there we go, get a look on that. Put the induction air filter on on there. Um, then we've got the front sprocket off on the um, on the cap. I'll just get my glove on. You notice that the um, one of the bolts are sheared off in the uh, front sprocket. There was a little bit sticking out on the uh, on the back, so we were able to uh, unscrew that with the um, with the needle nose pliers. And, um, there you go. Luckily, managed to get that out. So that's okay. Just got to get another new uh, a new bolt now. I might as well make it two of these uh, I think I'll get some steel ones not none of them uh, that monkey nuts crap what's uh, sheared off there I think I'll get two steel ones for there and um, put that back on um, the chassis uh, this side needs to be um, Black painted black again, like the other, like I did the other side. Get it all looking nice. A few cobwebs. Um, take this gear lever off, strip that down with the wire wheel, and uh, paint it black again um, as well. Um, there's a whole uh, load of cobwebs. I have to keep getting off. There's a few more there. Look. It's outside. You have spiders coming there. Uh, come and live on it I'm afraid um, yeah a little bit of black on there this one so pretty much done I took the uh, the rear brake um, or the whole rear brake system off the master cylinder needs um, replacing and get a, a universal one um, for that which will work out cheap it'll fit it as well it's got a slot um, as opposed to the other side where there's the two holes the other side for the master cylinder um, I think they're about 40 centimeters uh, from center apart and they've they do one exactly the same that's a universal uh, master cylinder for all the Chinese um, dirt bikes and the uh, the quad bikes or ATV if you call them that um, and there's a slot instead of um, a hole either side so it, you know it'll go from you know you can do it from 45 40 or whatever and you can just adjust it on the slots instead of uh, having it to be bang on with the um, with the hole so they're only they're only a couple of quid so it'd be a lot easier for me to just get one of them and uh, get it on there t to get it going straight away um, take a look over at the brake system in a minute actually um, that's about it I think we'll take a look at the uh, the front headlight uh, surround as well that I'm getting sorted out on there uh, for it, um, having a look at the wire, wiring and that in there, it's only a 2012 plate bike. I don't know what the guy, the guy that done it, pissed about and messed around with it for, uh, for what he was doing. Um, I don't know, but um, well, but we'll get it going again. So we got the rear brake system off, the master cylinder, and the uh, reservoir attached to it. Um, that's now probably keep the um, the two cap screws if they're not too uh, seasonable. But I need two nuts for there because they're a bit naff uh, on there. Um, so that master cylinder's got to be replaced. The hose is fine. The um, caliper itself seems fine. I got uh, tested the pistons with a screwdriver and there's movement in them still, so it should be okay. The bracket, the bracket on here needs to come off. I'm going to get the uh, the wire brush on that and spin that down, and then repaint that. 
Um, these bolts need uh, just the threads going back over again with the uh, with the die and cut them out and get rid of all the rust and recut them again. Um, obviously, the brake pads need replacing and take these knackered things out. And, uh, but the caliper should be safe. It should be saved. It should be okay. The hose seems okay. It's just the master cylinder that's uh, naffed and, and the pads. So a little bit of work to do there. But I'll say I've got to can get a replacement universal <coughs> master cylinder for that. So that's for a few quids, it's not a problem. Bird of prey. Bird of prey, flying high, flying high, bird of prey, bird of prey. All right, when it comes to the headlight, uh, we did test it, put a battery to the, um, the bike before we started taking things apart. And the ball, both these bulbs do work that are in it at the moment, so you don't want to mess around with them. Um, I'm not saying they're brilliant, but uh, they do work. Um, you see, the only problem here is the uh, that earth wire there has snapped away. As you can see someone's tried twisting it around there. Um, just focusing. See, that's so what I'm going to do. Is I'm just going to. Uh, solder that in place and solder that onto there so we ain't got no worries it's uh, it's it's not really um uh, a, a, a clip that you can clip on and off it's all in one on the um on the bracket there so it's not a clip that you can replace and crimp on so uh, really it will have to be um, soldered on there uh, hard soldered on there uh, all the other wiring seem is it okay enough? Uh, I took the back off there. I've just put it back down. It's okay. All connecting to the plug fine. There's no uh, cuts or anything like that. Um, the actual the actual uh, frame for the headlight the um, Is was a bit cracked in places. I used a bit of uh, fiberglass uh, sheet, you know, the the web netting sheet, um, and I used some two-part epoxy. I didn't use fiberglass resin, and I, I glassed it with some two. Put the sheet down, and then glassed it over with some um, there, there, and uh, along there. As you can see, all along the the, the length of there. I also reinforced. Um, Two strips of uh, aluminum across the top, or aluminium, as we say in the UK. I uh, use bolts. I did try rivets, but um, the rivets I either had rivets that were too long or slightly too short, and they pulled, pulled, or pulled back out through the plastic. So I put some bolts on there. They're all right. They can be, uh, they can be replaced for rivets at a later time, uh, but they're, they're fine as long as they're kept tight. Um, it's just to reinforce there. Obviously, a glass a little bit on the outside as well, so to reinforce there because you can see that uh, someone's tried to do the same with a bit of sheet metal on this side at one point because they obviously uh, you see there's a big crack that ran through there that was um, you know and and there you can see that it's gone twice there at some point. It's got another one there along there, so someone obviously put riveted a sheet in there and I, I, that's done the same thing with the glassing and the um, those two uh, aluminium strips so um, it's just to reinforce it so it just doesn't break off shear off and uh, it's dangling by the uh, by the wires on the uh, on the road the main side it's been um, it's been wrapped a little bit as uh, when it's dried this is the odd air bubbles come out on it but if you uh, you heat the gun back up again you can press them out uh, you get a tiny little pin and push them out I'm not too it, there was a little tear as well because it was was an awkward shape in its entirety to get it on and around it depends what uh, quality of wrap that you're using as well but it's 
it's not that big a deal, it's just to smarten it up so um, so it can be used. You can buy you can buy these anyway, you can buy universal ones to, to fit these uh, these bikes from uh, from China for not that much, but it's just see the rest of the money you can spend on something else. Um, I'm getting it I'm getting it ready. Um, you know, it, it'll go through its MOT and it can be used. Um, it'll be fine, it'll look it's smart enough and it'll look a bit better. Got the uh, headlight repaired and the surround all wrapped in red. And that's uh, back on. So it's not too bad. It's on there okay. Still got the front wheel to uh, replace when I can uh, when I can find one, pick one up. Doesn't look too bad in the red uh, vinyl. If I do some of the other panels that goes over the uh, the tank and down the sides as well, exactly the same. So it should look all right. So that's all done. All right. Okay. So we got. Um, that nut situation or the bolts or should we say situation sorted out on the sprocket um, the, the gear lever um, holding um, bolt pinches that up is the same thread M10, no, M6 times 1.0 uh, it's about a centimetre or 10 millimetres in, uh, in length the um, one that's on here but the, the one that was on there was a bit longer, it was about 30 millimeter um, in length. It's easy, I'll just add a look uh, online, it's easy for me to get something longer like that. So uh, what I did was I removed the, um, it's got to come off anyway, it's got to be stripped. It's, it's an easier way around of uh, doing it because I can put all this back on and, uh, and then put the gear lever and, and put the bolt on when it comes. Anyway, after the, after the, uh, the cover's been put back on and uh, I haven't really got to worry um, so it's a good way around of doing it, what I did is I put that through all the way through to the end, I put the other one back in all the way through to the end put it in the vise and uh, measured them up to get the, the lengths alongside each other and I just hacksawed the tip off um, just hacksawed the tip off uh, and put it, to, put it to the right length, so that'll go back on um, Okay, with that, that'll be good to go. And then when the uh, the bigger bolt arrives, and I have to put the, um, I'll fetch this off in a minute. Let's get, I'll get that off in a minute, and uh, then I'll put that back on and use the new bolt on that instead. So that's uh, that's that's that job sorted out. Okay, so we uh, blacked all the chassis all around again, and down the um, the stand as well. I did uh, clean up the uh, the springs and everything, but it looks like there's a bit of surface rust appearing again on those. Should get some, um, probably one of those things that you can't do nothing about. Uh, some of the older, uh, some of their older bikes, some of the parts, but probably get some of that anti, uh, you know, the the, the rust um, coating, spray up with that um, after I clean it up again. It should uh, should help with that. Um, it's one of the things that uh, got done. Got the uh, the leaves back on the ground again now though, because it's autumn. So uh, after uh, clearing all them out of the way, they're back again, which is a pain. Nothing can do about that. It's also one of the things what I was talking about before about actual. Um, sizes of your uh, your ratchets and the uh, the drives on them and the fact that the uh, the right ra the ranges go up to a, you know the quarter inch um, size 10 millimeter and a three eight inch size 10 millimeter exactly the same on those um, on those uh, nuts in there, the uh, the quarter, the ten with the quarter inch uh, 
was not liking it um, on doing them at, uh, at all. It was it, it was like it was putting a strain on them. All right, they might not have been uh, might not have been touched for a while, and the um, the heads on them were quite rusty. But the actual thread itself doesn't look too bad. A little bit of rust on there. No, you know, um, obviously that um, that one sheared off, so it was in there fairly uh, tight. But if it, if it sheared off, getting it out. Why was I able to uh, get the uh, the needle nose on the end that was sticking out and, uh, and and feed it all, carry on put, putting it all the way through and uh, getting it out uh, that way? Why did it come out with a, a slippery grip with them and shear off? Um, but uh, once the three eights went on, it come off easy as uh, you know come out easy as anything the one um, whereas the quarter the quarter inch was really you could you could tell it was really putting a strain on it now they go up to 14 15 millimeter uh, in size um, that's only a 10 so it should be fine for a 10 but like I say it's the application that you're using it for you're using it for something like that on a motorbike something mechanical on the motorbike especially and not not some, something like a dash or, or um a speedo fixing or anything like that um, you know something that matters it's got to be on tight and solid and, um, and, and and you're removing it with a fair amount of torque then you know then I'm thinking you know quarter inch here you can't you can't really go quarter inch you've either got to go three eighths or uh, or half inch um, for something like that so that's, that's the, you know, various DIY stuff. Yeah, if you're building um, a framework for something that come flat pack or something, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna struggle with a quarter inch. You, you should be fine for something like that, with something mechanical like that. Um, the three eighths, you know, if, even though it's much tiny, like a ten, you know, like that. Um, at least the three eighths or the half inch seems to get the job done properly. There's a quarter inch, I mean even a good quarter inch, you know, it's just uh, draper expert stuff, it's all draper expert. You know, the sockets, the, ble the, the extensions, the ratchets, uh, you know, it's not absolute cheap shit. It's, uh, you know, it's not it's not decked on 499 from Pound Stretcher. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, relative, relatively good mid-range stuff. So, um, you know, uh, It's just there knowing your uh, your limits of what you should be using, really, and what you shouldn't, on, on what kind of fixing, on what kind of you know um, bolt or whatever for a vehicle or um, something like that. You know, um, even if it's you know even if it's something small like a ten, and and it's rusty and it's it's stiff, and there's a lot of resistance, and you can feel that then ditch the quarter inch drive and switch up to um, three eighths or if you ain't got a three eighths but you've got um, a half inch with a ten that will fit then, then then just use your half inch drive and save yourself the hassle of um, knackering up a mechanism or something so, or snapping um, a drive on your extension or on your actual ratchet or something like that so I mean I know a lot of people do well, you know, I, uh, it goes up to 15 and we, we use them up to 15 because sometimes, you can't, I mean, sometimes you can't get it in there and you got, you've only got the uh, the space that you can get a, th a thin quarter inch socket and extension in there, you I mean, you can see it's a lot, it's a lot thinner than the 3 8 extension and socket, but not all that much really, so wherever, wherever you can get away with using the 3 8 at least, I'd do that. Um, or if you don't have a three eighths and you can get the half inch in there and do that. But uh, yeah, I really I could really feel the um the ratchet not liking it at all, the strain on there for the quarter inch and that was only a ten millimeter. So it's like I say, it's the application what your uh, fixing is going into or coming out of, you know, uh, makes the difference. The DIY, some DIY like I said, um, fixing up a a flat pack something or other you're not going to feel any strain on it whatsoever or anything like that it comes to something like mechanical like this 
you know, you, you can really start to feel the difference. I mean, somewhat mechanical, like I said, putting that on, putting on the uh, the speedometer on the top and bolt the speedometer bolts, no problem. But something actual, physically, you know, um, mechanical, like the gearing and things like that. And you can be asking for trouble there, um, especially removing old bolts that are rusted up.